Hey guys, Lewis here with Shutterstock Tutorials and today we're going to be running through DaVinci Resolve for editing for non-editors. Typically on our channel, we produce uh, intermediate to advanced software tutorials or if we do run over the basics of something, I think we kind of expect the audience to have some sort of knowledge of what we're talking about because we're throwing around uh, keywords such as keyframes, ripple editing and so forth. However, as DaVinci Resolve is free, or I should say there is a free version which is just as good as the pay version, a lot of people have taken it upon themselves to download Resolve and try to get into editing or perhaps you've been a little bit naughty and you've put that you can edit on your resume and your boss finally has asked you to put out a video on social media and you have no idea how to edit. Well, hopefully this video will guide you through that process. Now, although we are going to be working in DaVinci Resolve and talking about DaVinci Resolve specific tools, to some extent this information can be translated across all editing software. And yes, this will be as newbie friendly as possible. First, let's open the software. We are initially greeted with the project manager, and this is the window that houses all of your projects. Quite like a folder on your computer, you can also separate projects into individual folders, but all we're going to do is select create a new project. We are now brought into the media page. And initially, when you look at all these tabs, and flick through each page, it can feel like looking at the control board of a rocket ship and very overwhelming. However, for a simple edit, we're only gonna direct our focus to the edit page and the delivery page, but we don't need to worry about anything else. Although to explain the media pool found on the edit page, I do first need to give you a rundown of this media page. This is a page for organization and importing your media into the project. So you can go through all of your connected drives, bring in all the video footage from various folders, and then create a concrete folder hierarchy within Resolve for your edit. So everything is easy to find. All you do is find the folder with your footage, select all the clips, and then drag them into the media pool, which is the area that stores all of your editable media. And when you bring these files into Resolve, don't worry, it's non-destructive. That means your original media files remain untouched throughout any form of editing. But for me personally, I think if you're brand new to editing and you're just looking to put out a video for your social media feed, a quick YouTube presentation, I don't think that you need to learn this page in its entirety. Undoubtedly, this page is incredibly essential, especially when you're working with a magnitude of footage and you've got a lot of different hard drives to import from. You're gonna to want to be working in this page for yourself. If you're brand new, I think we can just jump straight to the edit page. This is the edit page. This is where we will be assembling our edit, putting footage together to make a complete video. And it looks daunting with all the buttons and all the gizmos, but don't fear, you're not gonna have to touch most of this. So I said to you that you don't have to worry about the media page at this stage of your editing journey. And it's because we can also directly import video, audio, and pictures straight into the media pool here. And the media pool is a mirror of what we have on the media page. So if you were to bring a video clip in from the first page, it will also appear here. But a more user-friendly approach is just to open a desktop folder with the footage and audio, select them, and then place them into the media pool. It does the same thing, but similar to the apps that you may find on your web browser. To get started, we need to create a timeline. A timeline is where we will place our video clips and audio clips to be assembled and to be edited. To do this, simply go up to File and select New Timeline. This pop-up menu will open, and for the most part, you can go ahead and click OK but I do want to quickly introduce you to the custom settings and then over to format. Here are the properties for your timeline, which should correlate with the properties of your media. So if you right click and select details of your video clip, you can see that it's in 30 frames per second. And you can also find out this information by selecting the metadata tab over on the right. So if your media clip is 30 frames per second, then you want your timeline to be 30 frames per second too. Now we have a timeline created, we can finally start editing our media but before we do so, let's quickly run over the user interface because you will be using different areas of this page. So to the right of the media pool, we have this effects panel, which is open by clicking the icon. And in fact, most Resolve works like a household kitchen. Most applications are tucked away, uh, like in a kitchen drawer with your knives and forks. And you open the corresponding panel by clicking the icon and you can close it by clicking it again. In the effects panel, you can access the effects library where you can apply video transitions, effects, and text to your video. Next to that, we have what is called the source viewer. 
This is where you would typically preview the clip before bringing it onto the timeline, because in a complex edit, you don't necessarily want to drag a media clip from the media pool straight onto the timeline, especially if it's like two minutes long or something. That creates problems. So in the source viewer, you would employ three point editing. And while that is something you would want to learn to keep things simple here, we're gonna omit that process for the basic edit. To the right of the source viewer is the preview viewer or the timeline viewer. And this will only display what's on the timeline or more notably, it will display the media that your playhead is currently positioned over. Above the preview viewer is the inspector, which is essentially the Swiss army knife of the edit page. Here we can change all the properties of both video and audio, and we will be coming back to use this a little later. As I said earlier, I wanted to make this newbie friendly and uh, as accessible for people who have not edited before uh, as possible. And I don't think it's gonna be that beneficial just to go around the timeline pointing at what things do. You can read the manual for that. It's not as great as hands-on approach. So instead we're gonna create a hypothetical situation. Uh, we work in a coffee store and we, there's been renovations for the last few weeks. And finally, the store is back open. The manager wants a 20, 25 second advert to post to Facebook to say, come on down. Uh, so we're gonna follow through those steps. And I think it's gonna be a lot more beneficial seeing the step-by-step -step process instead of just saying, hey, look, that icon turns on this feature. So we've received a message from the boss. The shop is ready to open and I want a 20 second video to post to Facebook to show our followers. There's a variety of clips to work with, but I want each clip to be four seconds long. You choose the order. We need our new opening times at the start and I would like an acoustic background track, but can we have cafe chatter under the music? Also, could you make sure our logo appears on the final clip and fades in? Okay, so there's several things to work with. Uh, so let's jump back into Resolve and onto the timeline. This here is our cutting board. It's where we will assemble our edit. It's composed of video tracks and audio tracks. And a track is where we will place that specific type of content to be edited. You can have an infinite number of tracks really, but each one can be turned off if needed. So I've downloaded the clips from the boss. I'm gonna open the folder from the desktop, select them all and input them into the media pool. With such a small quantity of clips, there's no pressure to create folders or bins as they are called in Resolve to organize the media. But if you wanted to, you could just right click and select add bin. To start, I'm gonna bring in a clip from the media pool and place it onto the timeline. All you do is select the clip and place it onto an empty track. And when in selection mode, you move the click around by simply selecting and holding the left mouse button. And upon release, the clip will drop into place. And then I'm going to place a second clip onto the timeline that follows the first clip. And timelines work in a linear fashion. So when you click play, the first clip on the timeline will be played first, then the preceding clip. But any media that is positioned above the foundation tracks will take precedence. For example, if I shorten these two clips clipply, play them back, we can see that they play in order. But if I add clip three to the second track, and a new track is created by merely holding media above it, and place it in between the first and second clip, we can then see that the video on track two takes priority when hitting play. So with that covered, let's revert to our original state and look at the problem we initially have. So the boss wants each clip to be four seconds. These two are anything but. So let's look at two ways that we can reduce the length of each clip, which is essentially the foundation of editing, finding the best moment of each clip to promote the story or the message you want. We could at first look to slice this clip, which is done with the blade editing tool. So I'm first gonna watch the clip by pressing play on the spacebar. And again, uh, if you decide to become more involved with editing, you want to start doing this in the source monitor, but don't worry about that for the time being. Uh, so, okay, I'm happy with the initial four seconds. So by selecting the blade tool, which is this, I'm gonna move four seconds in and press the left mouse button. And we create an edit by cutting the 16 second clip into two clips. We can then delete the surplus material by selecting it and hitting backspace. However, and more preferably, as that was one too many clicks, what we could do is first revert back to selection mode, which is this icon or A on the keyboard, go to the end point of a clip, and we're gonna pull this clip inward to decrease its length. And likewise, you can also do this at the start of a clip. So this is two ways that you can shorten the length of a clip to make sure that you've just got the best bit. So we've shortened both clips. We're gonna click play to preview the edit. And okay, cool. I'm gonna do this to the three remaining clips. But I've noticed two problems. First with this clip, I don't like the framing. 
I want to see less of the man and more of the coffee being made. So we need to adjust this. And to do this, we're going to select the clip and open the inspector. And this is essentially the utility box of Resolve. In this panel, we can adjust most of the parameters of the video and the audio when audio is selected. First, I'm going to adjust the position of the clip so I can move the composition framing. But look, we've adjusted it too far and we're showing negative space. Therefore, I also need to increase the zoom. And after a small tweak, there we go, we have it perfect. Secondly, if we look at the playback again, we have an error with the first clip. Our boss has filmed it backward and we don't want them to be closed, but open. Well, with some editing magic, we can correct this by reversing the clip. And all we're going to do to do that is right click, select change clip speed and then reverse speed. Now this clip plays in reverse, making it look like the shop is now open. And this is what editing is about. Uh, it's like a puzzle, I guess you could say. Uh, sometimes it feels like the, you found the right piece, but it's the completely wrong piece, or it is the right piece, it just needs to be flipped around to fit into the selection. So with that covered, we're now going to jump on to audio. So I'm going to go back to the media pool and import the audio to the first audio track. The section for the audio track is directly underneath the video and it operates in the same manner except for the way that the tracks take precedence. Because we can hear multiple sounds at once, if we were to layer several different music tracks, they wouldn't stop and play in order of their positioning, but instead we would hear all the tracks play at the same time. Not so great for applying numerous music tracks, but perfect for sound effects. Okay, so back to the advert. As you can see, the music is too long. Therefore, using the methods that we just learned, let's decrease the length of the track so it appears at the same time as our video content. Now, if we listen to the last five seconds, we have another problem. It abruptly cuts. Therefore, to fade out the audio, I'm going to extend the audio track height, which you can do so on any track by pulling it down in the track menu. And I'm going to zoom to the end of the audio track, select and hold this white handle and pull inward. Now, when we play the track, it fades out nicely. These handles are great for applying fade ins and fade outs, not only to audio, but video too. So our boss also wanted some background chatter, and I'm going to add this to a second track to play at the same time as the music, but starting from the second clip. And all you need to do is place this second piece of audio underneath and a new track will appear automatically. Again, using the methods that we learned in the video section, I'm going to decrease the audio length so it only appears when we're inside of the coffee shop and I'm going to fade in the chatter with the white handles. And to review our edit, let's play back the timeline. <clears throat> Alright, well, for the audio chatter, it's a little too loud. We just want it to appear softly, so we need to lower the volume of the chatter. And there are three ways in which you can do this. The first is back up to the inspector and then lower the volume. Alternatively, we can lower our audio levels on the clip itself by lowering this white line and of course increasing the height will increase the volume. Alternatively, we can open the mixer, which is done so by hitting this button. This opens a mixing panel where we can review the audio levels for the entire edit across every track. We can then lower the fader knob of audio 2 as the final way to lower the volume for this clip. However, do note that the other two operations only lower the volume of the selected clip. Using the mixer reduces the volume of the entire track, or if you lower the main mixer, it lowers the volume of every track. And hey, as a reference, you want the overall mix to be from minus 10 to minus 14 dB. So we have two out of four tasks completed. The next is text. So to add text, we need to open the effects library. And as said earlier, uh, this is where you would find all your transitions and effects. So if we wanted to be silly and put a style transition to our footage, we would just select the star transition wipe and drag it to the edit point of two clips. Now down to the titles. In many editing programs, titles act as individual media clips, meaning we're not adding titles to a specific video clip, but we're going to layer the titles above the media clip on a different track. Titles are generated on an alpha channel, meaning that the layer is completely transparent other than the text itself. We will see the text and the video beneath. But be careful because sometimes you may have your text file bleed into the next clip when it's not needed. So we're going to take the titles and place it above the second clip. But you know, it's, it's a bit plain, it's boring. Even if I add some color, it doesn't really sell the edit. So we could do with some animated titles. But the thing is, if you're not an editor, animating titles is an entirely different ball game. But thankfully, Resolve has built in animated titles that we can use. So I'm going to select title slide in from center line 
and add it over the second clip and decrease the length so it coincides with the length of the clip underneath. And by the way, all of our edits will snap and fit with the playhead or in line with other clips because we have snapping activated, which is this magnet. By deactivating the magnet, you will find that the clips move more fluidly, but perhaps with less precision. So now we need to edit the text and can you guess where? Yep, the inspector. Nine times out of 10, if you want to adjust the property of any element found within the timeline, it's done within the inspector. So I'm gonna open the inspector and switch the left text to where open and the right text to the times. I'm also going to adjust the color of the right text, which can be done in the color palette. Okay, yeah, that looks great. Let's play that back. Okay, looks nice. And our final task is to have the logo appear in the last four seconds. So again, I will take this from our folder and apply it to track two and position it within the relevant area. So our boss wants it to fade in and quite like fading in the audio, we're gonna find the white handle and bring that inward toward the center of the clip and upon playback, we have this. Perfect. At the start, I said that we weren't going to stop by the color page, but there is something that we can do regarding color on the edit page. If you feel like your footage is perhaps slacking in saturation or contrast, is press Alt A, and I will auto correct the footage. It might not be perfect or completely precise, but it will adjust the white balance, add contrast, and shift the saturation for better looking footage. It is a quick fix, so it might not always be perfect, but it's great if you feel like your footage is a little lifeless and you're unsure on how to correct it. And finally, to conclude our presentation, we need to head to the delivery page to render our footage. Now, if you're not too sure about what rendering is, exporting is, uh, it's kind of like baking. I guess you could see that we've taken all of our ingredients, mixed them together, layered them on top of each other, and then we need to pop them in the oven uh, to bake as a single item. That's what rendering is, it's taking our video, audio, graphics, everything else, and conforming them into a single media item. So we're gonna hit the delivery tab. And again, there are lots of options, but we only need to focus on a few. First, we need to select the file name for our new video and choose the destination folder. This is where the video will be saved. We then have a variety of different export options. And when I was starting out, if there was anything less confusing than editing itself, it was the render settings. Thankfully, Resolve has a number of built-in presets that are based on some of the most popular online encoding options, one being H.264. So we can just hit the H.264 master, keep everything as is, select Add to Render Queue, and finally press Start Render to have a completed video. Okay, so that concludes our tutorial today, uh, our somewhat theatrical presentation, but through that, you should be able to understand now how to import your footage, edit, adjust the video parameters, such as the positioning and the zoom, fade in, uh, add audio, adjust the audio levels, text, graphics, and render. Now, editing, uh, you know, I won't beat around the bush, it can be difficult, and there's a lot that we skipped over, but I'm fairly confident that through what we've presented here today, uh, you should be able to get a video out of it. If you are interested in learning more advanced techniques and tips, actually on our sister uh, site, Premium Beat, I have a six part tutorial series in DaVinci Resolve. It's a few years old, but the, uh, the information is still solid. And uh, I'll leave you guys there. So my name is Lewis with Shutterstock Tutorials, and I will catch you guys next time.